Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Monday the 16th of August 2021. A lot going on today. It's Monday and there's a lot going on. So let's jump into it. So we got this from the LondonNewsOnline.co.uk and it says early draw suggesting that Mill could face the same obstacle in 21-2 championship season. It might be early days in the new championship season but it's already been beginning to feel like it could be the same old story for Mill this year. The Lions played out the most draws in the league last season. And they've already racked up two from two this term. On reflection, Saturday's performance was one which warranted more than a point. But Gary Rout's side appeared to have picked up from where they left off in May when it comes to their inability to kill games off. The visitors were there for the taking all afternoon. Black, Black, Blackburn barely laid a glove on Mill throughout. And the Lancashire outfit were on the ropes before Jed Wallace's World World Opener, which came after a sustained spell of pressure early in the second half. But the Lions inexplicably allowed the visitors to climb back up with the canvas and strike back after failing to kill off the game. They perhaps should have even been out of sight before Wallace struck, with Jake Cooper spurning a couple of golden chances from set pieces. Danny McNamara also went close, but Mill failed to translate their domination on the ball into many fluent chances. There were times last year when Mill lined up in a 5-2-3 and was steamrolled in midfield, hence a slight tweak to the 5-3-2-4 shape, which Rao has settled on, but the Lions midfield trio on Saturday were pretty ineffective in terms of progressing play. Having three central defenders with two midfielders sitting on top of them tends to limit the options to advance to play through the heart of the pitch. Something you have to do if you're going to deploy a three-man midfield. It's not all doom and gloom though. After netting for the second weekend in a row, Wallace is up and firing again. The Lions talisman seem to drift in and out of the game, but still always look likely to be the difference between the two sides. As always, Mill's success is largely to depend on how many other players can thrive alongside Wallace rather than the attacker's fall. It's pretty much now given that he's going to be leading the way for the Lions in terms of the attacking returns. Rowett himself said that players such as Benek, Phoebe, George Savile, two key summer signings who were brought to the den to supplement Wallace in the scoring charts, will improve as the games tick by. Both are playing catch-up after a disjointed summer. Savile has already netted once since his return to SC16 despite not being fully fit, but has already shown glimpses of his knack for drifting into advanced positions. A phobia already looks a cut above last season's lone addition to the Lions Trifles, but it feels like an early goal will do in the world of good after a tough couple of years. The early signs for the on loan Stoke Man are encouraging, though, and he was withdrawn to a standing ovation after tiring late in the day. Mill's inability to hold on to a lead for the second week in a row will be a concern, though. Ben Burton Diaz nudged ahead of his marker to glance the equaliser home with beyond Bar Biakowski, who didn't make a save all afternoon. Dan Ballard and Murray Wallace impressed alongside Cooper, but Rao will be hoping that Sean Hutchinson's quad issue isn't a long-term problem. Whilst others may offer more than Mills Mr. Dependable on the ball at times, the Lions don't look as secure when he's absent. The hosts huffed and puffed, but didn't really threaten to find a winner, with substitutes being introduced too late to turn the tide. Fulham are the next visitors to SC16, and the Lions will be wary of getting a result on the board to avoid another traditional slow start to the season. Star man Dan Ballard, the on loan Arsenal man, adds an extra dimension to the Lions play at the back and was solid defensively too. Uh, best moment, the move leading to Jed Wallace's goal was top quality, only matched by the thunderous reaction from the Den crowd. So there you go. Um, yeah, pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much what I said the other day, isn't it? It's the same old, same old. Drawing, drawing the games. Um, still something missing. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Uh, let's move on now to this. So this is uh, Gary Rowett still hoping to add final piece of the puzzle to his Mule squad before transfer window shuts. This is also from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk. It says Gary Rowett is still hoping he might be able to make one more signing in this transfer window, but that depends on a couple of outgoings from his Mule squad. The Lions are unbeaten after two rounds of the championship season, following up a 1-1 draw at QPR on the opening day with the same scoreline at home to Blackburn on Saturday. Mill have made five signings since the last summer, but have not been able to move on the likes of striker John Daly Barson, who has dropped down the pecking order in SC16. Portsmouth have expressed interest in midfielder Ben Thompson, but are struggling to make the finances stack up. Right back Marlon Romeo has not made the Lions match their squad for their opening two league matches. 
Rout told Saffron in the press, firstly, I've been really pleased with the business we've done. I've been pretty grateful that we've been able to get a lot of our business over the line early. There are a lot of clubs who haven't done that type of business. But I've also been quite open in saying that I'd like to bring one more player in. I think that in order to do that, I've also been quite clear that I probably need to move a couple of players on. And we haven't been able to do that at a moment in time. Or the opportunities we've had uh, haven't quite met a realistic sort of figure. We're still watching what happens and we're quite open-minded about it. But we're probably one player away from being really, really good side. That is the aim uh, at this window. I'm certain that you're not going to sit here and cry if we don't end up being in a position to do that. But that's what it's like in an ideal world. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, again, uh, the missing piece. Um, it's like, oh, we just we just need one more player and then we're there. We're just one more player. It's like, and it's just signing Messi. How much difference can one player make if the system isn't right? And so we've known about John David Watson being uh, told he can leave. Uh pretty bluntly. Uh, Portsmouth, we know about Ben Thompson. He's in his last year's contract. Will he get a new one? Um, is he good enough for championship week in, week out? I know he's a Millwall fan, but he, he needs to look after himself now. Um, and uh, sort out his future. Um, so I would imagine it's up to him that he probably runs out his contract or they let him run it out or maybe we get to January and then he moves on but Marlon Romeo being uh, discussed as someone who could be moved on um, I can see it's a possibility um, uh, there's there's a, a chunk of fans who are not happy with uh, all the stuff that's been going on uh, non-football related stuff and in terms of players, we've got Danny McNamara now and Dan Ballard now. Now Dan Ballard can play right back for, he plays right back uh, for Northern Ireland. That is his position for, for Northern Ireland because they have other players who play centre back. Um, so, there, dare I say, when Hutchinson is back, Hutchinson is back and Cooper's fully fit, um, we could see a situation where actually Dan Ballard plays a, at a wing back and Mag McNamara's on the bench and uh, Hutchison, Cooper and Murray Wallace play as the three centre backs so and that so Marlon Romeo could could leave it's not beyond the realms of possibility um, another thing to consider is I don't know if this is related to financial fair play in terms of the amount of money you're spending each week and that's why we need to let players go out before we can come in but if it's just money overall in general we still have the saga of um, Abdul Abdul Malik and when he uh, moves on if he moves on, if he signs a, uh, a deal with another club there's also conversation coming from that so that could be uh, the difference and maybe that, that could help um, finance the player to come in to save our season from ending up being uh, another boring draw fest but we we will see we will see so uh, moving on now quickly this is uh, this is whoscored.com and it's the uh, match center player stats for Barra Hartlepool now why am I showing you this well I'm showing you this because Tyler Burry is on loan at Hartlepool and this is the uh, Monday morning loan roundup. Now Hayden Muller, St Johnston had a cup game, League Cup game. They were away to Arbroath. I believe it went to. I'm not sure if it's extra time and penalties or just penalties. They had a penalty shootout. They did win it. Hayden Muller was on the bench for the whole game. So there's that. And he was also on the bench for the whole game for last. Thursday when St Johnson lost quite heavily to Galatasaray at home so they were playing uh, in Scotland and they played Galatasaray they they got a 1-1 draw in the away leg out in Galatasaray 
And in the second leg, they got beaten quite heavily. I think it was 4-2 in the end. And Hayden Muller was on the bench for that as well. So for the whole game. So two games for St. Johnson this week. And Hayden Muller was on the bench. Stayed on the bench for, the, for both of them. But Tyler Burry did play. And he scored. Yeah. Can you believe that? There you go. So Hartlepool, they lost... They lost three two away to Barrow. Um, so Barrow, I think, came up last season um, from the conference, and now Hartlepool came up. Uh, well, Barrow came up the season a couple of seasons ago to, to League Two. Hartlepool came up last season, and this is the first season back in in League Two. Um, so they are the underdog, even though they have the um, probably more pedigree as a league team. But here you go. Look, Tyler Burry played 89 minutes, two shots, one on target, one key pass, 60% uh, pass accuracy, uh, only 23 touches in the whole game. But he scored a goal and he got a high rating, uh, 7.18, um, which is so that's the second best for Hartlepool but in terms of the game game overall. So it's probably like the fifth or sixth. Best player on the pitch there. Um, in terms of offense, what did he do? Let's have a little look. So, yeah, um, there it is. I'm not going to read all that out. Uh, again, uh, defensively, I doubt he did it much here. I uh, he had four fouls, one clearance. So there's that. And again with the passing stats, uh, one key pass, ten passes, one cross, one accurate cross. So there you go. Uh, Seven point one eight rating for Tyler Burry in League Two, and he got a goal. So he's had two. He's had two games now. Uh, in the league, I don't know if he played in the cup game. He's had two games in the league, got an assist in one, and got a goal in the other. How's that? Pretty decent. Pretty decent. Good to see he's um, hit the ground running there. Good to see. Uh, moving on now to we have a game tomorrow. But Hutchinson will likely, is unlikely to face former club Fulham at the den tomorrow. So, here you go. This is from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk. So, Sean Hutchinson looks set to miss the visit of his former club Fulham tomorrow night with the Mill centre back set for a scan today on his quad injury. 30-year-old Geordie set out the 1-1 draw against Blackburn Rovers at the Den at the weekend. And Lions boss Gary Rout is set to find out the full extent of Hutchinson's issue this week. I imagine Hutchie is going to be a doubt. I think he'll go for a scan tomorrow, Rout told the South London Press yesterday. We don't think it's anything too serious, but we don't want to risk him uh, this early in the season and end up with him being out for a long time. If it's obviously a blow that he's unavailable at the moment, and disappointing it happened too, so close to a game. He felt his quad on Friday and pulled out of the training session midway through as a precaution. He still felt his quad on Saturday but felt a lot better. He went outside at the training ground and did a little bit of fitness test and pitched it. Still at about 70 or 80% running. If you remember previously he had his calf issue where he felt something, played on and ended up pulling his calf, being out for six weeks. It's probably in the back of Hutchie's mind to make sure rather than keep playing. The scan will tell us a little bit more on Monday and we'll have a clearer picture. Hutchie is an influential player for us, one of the most important players over the two years we've been here. We don't want him to be over for a long time by rushing him into something when we're not sure what it is. Uh, Miko uh, was a little bit tight after the Blackburn game with his calf. It will be a more fatigue-based one with one or two of the others, whether they can go three games in a week on the back of pre-season. It might mean we need to freshen up in one or two areas. I'll know a little bit more once I've seen the players train. We're going to need energy against Fulham because they're a good side. Is that little clue there? Is that little clue? We're going to need energy. Could we see Mahoney come in? Could we see Billy Mitchell come in? Maybe. Maybe. So, let's get into it. Here we go. Here we go. This is uh, 11v11.com and it's basically the historical records of all the games between Millwall and Fulham. Fulham and Millwall. I've ordered it into um, Millwall versus Fulham first. So home, Millwall home, Fulham away. And they go all the way down to this game here, which is tomorrow's game, 17th of August 21. That one there. 
so not many games because obviously we've been in different divisions for a lot of our history um, but I will tell you now what stands out to me is most recently so last year it was 1-1 before that we lost 3-1 in the League Cup that we got absolutely smashed I went to the game quite embarrassing this game as well uh, we got absolutely smashed 3-0 that was in the league before that 0-0 2015 then before that a long long way before that 1998 we lost 1-0 then 97 drew 1-1 1986 so another nine nine uh, year jump back uh, to a 1-1 and then finally you go all the way back from 29 years from today Mill versus Fulham at the old den 25th of April 1982 we won 4-3 so that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 games ago 8 games ago since we beat Fulham at home 8 games ago <sighs> ah. and if you look in terms of how many games we actually won we haven't won that many against them we won the first one in 1932 we won again in 1937 that was in the FA Cup we won again in 1965 that was in the FA Cup 1968 uh, 1971 uh, 1974 1974 twice and then a little free game run of not winning and then the ones in 1981 1982 and then zip and bupkis from 1982 to now from 1982 to now so there are most of you probably a few of you watching this were not alive the last time we beat fulham at a den you are not alive and i imagine a few of you your friggin parents weren't even alive You're, what does that mean? Does it mean anything? Um, it means uh, Fulham are a good team. They've been a good team for a while and we uh better than us in terms of money. You know, we had the um, they had the Al Fayed money. They got into the Premier League. They had Kevin Keegan and all that. Still got their ropey old ground at Caven Craven Cottage though. Um, and they've kind of come off the boil, but they're still doing it. They got the Premier money. They paid twelve million pounds for Harry Wilson to come in this season. Twelve million. They transfer fee. Twelve million. You could probably buy all of our squad with twelve million. It really is uh, David and Goliath. Even though you wouldn't, you don't really think about it because it's Fulham, and they're just there over the other side of the river. But it's David versus Goliath. It really is. 29 years we haven't beaten them at the Den. Will we beat them tomorrow? Now, who knows now? So, this is David Prun. This is from SkySport.com. Now, uh, the game is on Sky Sports Football tomorrow. So, it's on live on Sky Sports. If you wanted to watch it uh, on the television instead of going to the game. Uh, because I did tell you last week the trains are absolutely fucked up and here's another thing I just found out um, the main one of the main routes through Deptford Evelyn Street that the um, a lot of people use to get to the ground that's all being dug up to put in uh, one of these cycle super highways so that's completely fucked up as well so It might be best for a few of you, uh, even if you, you've already bought your ticket on your season ticket, just to um, save yourself the hassle and watch it on Sky Sports. But that's up to you. That's up to you. But here we go. So this is uh, David Pratton, Skybet Championship predictions. What does he predict? He got it bang on uh, the Blackburn game. He said 1-1. One, one. He, he got that spot on there. So what do they say? Let's scroll down. Where? Oh, here we go. Here we go. What is he going to say? What do you think, everyone? Do you want to guess? So two games in and two draws for Millwall. It's been a steady enough start for Gary Wright and his men, but now they face their biggest challenge yet. 
Fulham were excellent at Huddersfield on Saturday. It doesn't look like goals or chances will be in short supply this season, although a trip across London to the Den is a real test for them, but one I think they can take all three points from. And he predicts Millwall 1, Fulham 2. Mmm, okay. Well, here's the thing. Um, for some reason, some of our players, I'm not going to name names, they, uh, when the Sky Sports cameras are there, they actually uh, put in a bit of more effort. Visibly so, if you're someone who watches all the games and you, you see the, um, the games on Sky, you can see, well, like, what's he doing that for? He's never done that before. And you, oh, it's because the Sky cameras are there. It's because the Sky cameras are there. So we will see how it gets on. So let's have a little look now at this. This is from whoscored.com and it is a preview of the game. So they've got probable lineups. I 100% this is not going to be, be the team. Absolutely not going to be the team. I don't think since Rowett's been here we've ever played the same team twice in a, in a row. I don't think so. Maybe if someone out there knows you can tell us but he's always tinkering he's always messing and even when he doesn't want to um players get injured and and that and he's he's banging on about fitness and fitness and fitness it's like here's, here's a little tip for you if you you play the players they actually get fit you know if, if you give someone actually game time don't keep swipping swapping them in and out of the team they actually, they actually do get fit you know it's remarkable so here they go um Maybe we might see Bradshaw on, maybe not. Maybe Wallace will be up front on his own. Uh, Mitchell will be in there probably for Keftenbeld. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Cooper will play up front. Who knows, it's all a bit strange, isn't it? So, let's have a little look, see what we got here. So, they say out for Millwall, Sean Hutchison, missing players here. Uh, Mason Bennett, Marlon Romeo, although they say he's injured, he's not injured. Now, Gary Wright's explanation for why Marlon Romeo hasn't been in any squad set for the Portsmouth Cup game was Ryan Leonard can play a right wing back and he can also play in midfield. So we are going to have Ryan Leonard on the bench instead of Marlon Romeo who can basically only play right wing back. Even though he played in uh, centre back quite disastrously at the end of last season, so he's only at one position. Other players have more positions, so that's why he's not in the squad. That's what he said, but maybe there's something else going on. Maybe there is something else going on. So, they say Jay Cooper returned to action on Saturday afternoon, but the London club will be out with club tech captain, centre-back partner Sean Hutchison, who suffered a quad injury in training. The home side should line up unchanged in midweek. The first drive's right back. Marlon Romeo is still cyanide. Yeah, I doubt it. You know what? We might actually see uh, Ryan Leonard start, maybe. Maybe Ryan Leonard for Kifton Beld. Billy Mitchell for Evans. Could we see maybe Wallace and Mahoney up front? Maybe. So we basically no one up front, or whatever they call it, false number nine, that, all that bullshit. Basically, we'll. It's very highly likely that we'll line up at, at home without playing one striker up front. So enjoy watching that, huh? Enjoy watching that. Uh, Tom Kearney is out for Fulham. Terence Congolo is out for Fulham. Harry Wilson is out. He got a red card. He got a red card in the last, in the game against Huddersfield, and uh, which is so they used the twelve million pound that I, I told you about the signing they made from Liverpool. He's out. Harrison Reed is doubtful. So what do they say? Some signing Harry Wilson was shown a straight red card on Saturday afternoon. We'll miss a short trip across London on Tuesday night. Andre Frank Zambu and Guissa was a shock inclusion on the bench against Huddersfield and could start in midweek. Ivan Cavaliero bagged two goals as a substitute on Saturday afternoon and will be the man to replace the spend Wilson out wide. 
Um, so here we go. What do they say? Match facts. Fulham are undefeated in their last six matches against Millwall in all competitions. So um, we haven't beaten them for seven matches. So that, that would include home and away. Wow. Wow, well, wow, well, wow, well, wow, well, wow. Well. So Millwall dominated the proceedings on Saturday afternoon. Out shooting and talent in Blackburn side 15-2. But a second half strike from Ben Berylton Diaz restricted the London club to just a point in the second league game of the season. The Lions have drawn 1-1 in both championship matches so far, but will do well to match that feat for a third time here. Fulham reduced to 10 men with over 20 minutes still left to play on Saturday, but the London club made their presence felt, adding another two goals to their tally as they romped to a 5-1 away victory against the dismal Huddersfield side. The margin of that victory moves Marco Silva's men to the top of the championship table on goal difference. Now, I would like to think that Millwall have more about them than Huddersfield. And now we've actually got better defence than Huddersfield. But even Huddersfield has scored one goal against Fulham. And you can see here that reflects on the predict prediction made by whoscored.com. They say it will be Millwall 1, Fulham 3. So they say Millwall 1, Fulham 3. So basically... We're going to get a shoe in like Huddersfield, but it won't be so bad. We will see. We will see. Um, personally, I, I don't know what to predict. Um, I could see it being anything. I could see it being another draw. I could see Fulham smashing us. I could see... I could see it being nil-nil. Um, and I would see Gary Rowett actually trying to get nil-nil. Being happy you got nil nil, and what you need to remember is that we did play F Fulham in pre season. If you've seen the video from a couple of weeks ago, what I made, and we drew one one with them. We played them at our training ground, I think it was our training ground, and we drew one one. So, but that was before Harry Wilson and Paolo Gazaniga come in. Now, Harry Wilson's out tomorrow, Gazaniga's still in, but. Does that mean we can get 1-1 one, one again? I think... Um, yeah, I think we're looking at another draw, probably 0-0. Nil, nil. And I think Gary Rowell will be beaming when he fits, if finishes 0-0. Nil, nil. And he'll be so happy with himself. And I think the fans will just be so fucking uh, pissed off. It will be uh, unbelievable, especially if we play as I expect with no one up front. With a uh, false number 9 as Jed Wallace and... Especially with the fucking sky cameras there. Watch, watch, watch how fan, fucking pissed off the fans will be. Really, watch it. Um. Anyway. So. That's not the only game tomorrow involving me or Wallside. We got the under 23 starting their first game of the season. They're playing at the tr their mill training ground at Calment Road. They are playing Crew Alexandra. And there's there's an about saying there. I think that's Dan Moss there, uh, number 44, I'm not too sure. Uh, Mills under 23s open up their 21-22 Professional Development League South campaign on Tuesday afternoon as they take on Crew Alexandra. Kevin Nugent's side have enjoyed a testing pre-season schedule, but now they begin their fixture list with a visit of the Railway Men. Full updates from Calment Road will be available on the Lions official Twitter account at MillwFC, whilst a report and reaction from the game will be published on MillwFC.co.uk after the final whistle. Millwall squad for this fixture is yet to be decided. Okay, so there's that game tomorrow as well. Now, uh, the fixtures are out and they've kind of decided where the games are going to be. But remember, remember, remember... These games often do get changed late in the day to training grounds and whatnot. Um, so this is just a guide. You've got to look at the... Don't book your train tickets yet. Figure it out closer to the date what's going to happen. But So there are actually a few games in, in stadiums. So we are getting back to normal now. Um, Mill's first away game on August the 23rd on a Monday. So that's uh, next Monday. Is they're playing whole city, but in York at the LN London North Eastern Railway Community Stadium, which is in York. 
and I hear York is a pretty um, decent town. I've never been myself. Uh, a lot of interesting things to do. Um, if you want to maybe head up there for that, the game's at 7 o'clock in the evening. Go up, uh, enjoy the day in York, and then watch the game and then get back. Uh, I imagine you, it's quite easy to get a train back from York uh, at night. Um, it's... Uh, Got a lot of the railway lines going through it, I believe. And then we got the first game at the Den, which is uh, against Barnsley. Like I said, the, these are subjects changed. Tuesday, September 21. Cardiff game is is in the stadium as well. And then we got Friday, October 1. QPR. Not bad, not bad. Um, then we got Charlton at the Valley. Charlton at the Valley on Friday, October 22. Colchester's will be in their stadium on Monday. That's a night game. Um, and then we've got a few in the training grounds over Christmas and whatnot. And then Monday, January 10, 22. Um, Charlton at the Den. And then um, a few in training grounds, training grounds. And then April the 1st, April Fool's Day. Who will be the Fools? Peter reunited at the Den. And then Bramall Lane, you ever been to watch a real team at Bramall Lane? Well, maybe you got your chance here. Sheffield United under 23s. Um, playing April 26, 2022. It's night game as well. Although it's in April, so it may be quite light at 7 o'clock at night. And then the final game, which is supposed to be at the Den. Sheffield Wednesday, May the 3rd. So there you go. There's... Uh, all the games are supposed to be um, played now, but like I said, they are subjects you change quite late in the day, so be careful um, and keep an eye on this. This is from millfc.co.uk forward slash matches forward slash fixtures, and then you just click on this here and you can go to whichever team you want to highlight. Let's check the first team. Check, check it back to under 23s, and there you go. So just keep an eye on that if you're uh, of the persuasion of wanting to go to a Millwall game, especially if you want to go to a Millwall game at a ground you've not been to before. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty decent. Um, I, now, I'm, I'm not too au fait with uh, the quality of these teams here, but I think Millwall got a good, good chance against these teams. I think they, they have, especially with their preseason. They've won quite a few games. So we'll see how they get on tomorrow. We'll see how um, Fulham get on against Millwall. Hopefully uh, we won't all be bored to death. But who knows? Anyway, that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.